Empowering listeners from the US to the UK. Live on air with Stephen Cuoco. The word was sent. A lot of people are looking forward to this interview. I had the distinguished pleasure of attending the Playmakers hosted by Lee Steinberg. A lot of you know who he is. My team did a great job letting everyone know. I got to start off by saying whether you're listening to us on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio or Biz Talk Radio, Live on Air with Stephen Cuoco is your premier destination of all things news, sports, entertainment, film, television, and more. I don't have to go above and beyond to put together a an intro for this this young, vibrant, esteemed gentleman, Mr. Lee Steinberg. Uh, but I'm going to tell you a short, you know, a little bit about him, just in case if you're just tuning in new to the show. Uh, thank you to everyone who's listening to Live on Air with Stephen Cuoco on Biz Talk Radio, biztalkradio.com. Also, download the Power 98.5 satellite radio app. It's available on Alexa. Also, Power 98.5 is available on Apple Music. So you got a lot of choices, a lot of places where you can listen. Mr. Lee Steinberg, he's a sports agent, philanthropist, author, and during his 41-year career, Steinberg has present or represented over 300 professional athletes in football, baseball, basketball, boxing, and Olympic sports. And it's been told, and it's on record, that he is the reason of why the hit film Jerry Maguire with Tom Cruise is the success of what it is today. I remember that film. I never thought in a million years I would have the opportunity not only to have Lee on my show, but also to have attended one of the most prestigious events at the Ahern in Las Vegas, Nevada. Very happy to have been in Las Vegas at the time when this event happened. So much was packed into it. A lot of great people. Lee, welcome to Live On Air with Stephen Coco. Thank you, Stephen. Good to be with you. I have to say the Playmakers, I want to say the Playmakers ball. It felt like a ball when I was there. Everyone was dressed to the nines. No one underscored. Getty Images was there. Shutterstock was there. Uh, Sheen Magazine was there. It was a phenomenal event. Thank you. Um, what we try to do is echo the fact that the Super Bowl has become a convention of Americana. Big business, politics, sports, and entertainment all coming together for, for a week. And so we try to have a party that's fun, but at the same time, raise money for Special Olympics, have a concussion um, have brain health summit where we explore prevention, awareness, and cure. Um, we had uh, a great poker tournament. We had uh, an e-sport exhibition with Michigan playing against Michigan State, um, and then a brain body lounge with new modalities of healing. So it's, um, and, and gave humanitarian awards to uh, figures in, in the world of football that do philanthropic things off the field. So it's uh, intended to uh, accomplish multiple purposes. Yeah, the brain body lounge, we've got to go there. If you want to go there because that I walked up the steps I felt like I was walking up the steps on the Titanic I mean they were <laughs> long <laughs> I've been to the Ahern before but I'm not used to those steps and they're long but they're they're elegant steps to walk up to and I turn to my left and I see this gorgeous bar and then I see the machines and there's brain mapping there I went into one machine where it where it's a bed and I spun around for five minutes and my ears got hooked up to uh, these, these instrument things. I don't know what you call them, but it was the most incredible experience. They had massage up there. Also um, uh, a breathing, uh, if I may, what was that thing? I, I got to tell you, that's what impressed me the mostly. Um, 
What was it? I got it right here. Uh, it was um, for the Super Bowl. It's that breather uh, they yeah. use for athletes. Uh, yeah. it, that device. How yeah. incredible it's changed me. The way I breathe. And the one gentleman, Lee, he said, I always breathe all the way down to my butt. I was like, I don't do that often. I usually, you know, they say to breathe down to the stomach. And ever since I've been using this tech, doing this technique and this breathing tool, I've noticed a huge change in a way my body is breathing now. So the point to all that is that as a human um, had developed, there became less room to uh, have airways. And you're supposed to breathe diaphragmatically so that the only thing that's supposed to happen in your throat is the shaping of sounds. And so we brought this device that allows you to get more air, more air, feel better, more air, more energy, higher productivity. And so I'm so glad you liked it. I did. I'm going to have them on my show. I, um, let me see here. I spoke with um, Mark Carbone. Yes, it was. Thank you for that. Lee, you got a great memory. It was Mark. He's going to be a guest on the show. It's been incredible. He told me he's still recovering from the Super Bowl. (laughs) Right. What was, uh, did the playmakers, did it meet to all of your goals and expectations? And is there anything underlying that for the future, are you ever going to do it again? And if so, what should the public, what should the listeners and, and people know of why they have to attend this? Um, I think that the uh, poker tournament was a big success. And we had Jamie Gold, who won the World Series of Poker, uh, Phil Hamlet who uh, is probably the most famous poker player. So it, th- that was a great success. And then the, the um, eSports is evolving so quickly that now we're seeing young people do more in terms of competing in eSports than Little League Baseball um, or other more traditional sports. So we wanted to highlight the advances that had come there and and here you had two colleges that were playing against each other michigan and michigan state and uh, of course you're not playing the game in that situation you're watching someone else play the game and so it's sort of a breakthrough are you impressed by how well not only technology is advancing for athletes and how athletes are have more availability to tools and resources and advocates that are looking for pre- better preventative measures for their overall health and well-being because so much has changed. Can you expand, Lee, on your thoughts about technology, performance, and the preventative care for athletes? And could there be better measures for preventative care for athletes? So I think we're on the verge of a paradigm shift in terms of how we treat health, wellness, disease, with the emphasis going on prevention. And there are new biomed breakthroughs that continue to come. Uh, One of them is hyperbaric oxygen, which has been shown to extend the telomeres internally, the building blocks of life. Another one is red, white, and blue light. Uh, that heals muscles. So from an athletic perspective, a couple goals. One is that most games are coming down to the fourth quarter or even to the last drive. So is there a way to stimulate energy, endurance, and productivity in those critical moments um, without the use of drugs? And the answer is some of what I just talked about. And then when you have players get injured in professional sports, their backup is no longer someone that's slightly less talented. It's a precipitous drop to the backup because of the way the salary cap works. So um, it's critical to get players back quicker, and that can happen too. 
So if you can validate these concepts in professional sports, then they become accessible to all of us uh, who want to have cognitive health, who want to live longer. Um, and so I think we're going to, uh, in the midst of a big shift, which will be towards preventative uh, medicine and a variety of, of, of uh, techniques that that use oxygen and heat and and uh, interact with the body in in a way that will make us all healthier. What stood out the most in the impressive line? Excuse me, a little bit of allergies. Uh, impressive lineup that was there at the Playmakers event was brain mapping. <clears throat> And that is something I find extremely fascinating. Right now, I'm working on rebuilding my mitochondria. It's going extremely well. I'm going to be 50 this April. And I can tell you, with the measures of brain mapping, it is absolutely huge. And if anyone who doesn't know about brain mapping, it's to define the structure and function, to sum it up, of the human brain in health and disease. What are your thoughts about brain mapping, its function, and how can it better lead us to understand our health? Because through my five decades, it's something that was never really talked about of the importance of brain health. And that's because the brain, in many senses, is the last frontier of medical research. When I would go with athletes who got hit in the head to doctors back in the 80s and 90s and asked them how many hits risk long-term impairment, when should someone retire? They had no answers. So this is all coming on very quickly. What we've discovered is the concept of neuroplasticity, which is that an impaired brain can be rewired and build new neurons and return back to health. One of the methods is something called RTMS, which is magnets against the brain. Another is Dr. Tommy Shavers with his neuro... Uh, feedback. and But in all cases, what can happen is they can improve memory, improve the time of mental processing. And this is all exciting stuff and available basically to everyone. Is it as cost effective? And before you answer that, Lee, the reason why I'm asking is one of the things that I found in my conversations there is insurance companies are not covering this. And I would think they would for preventative care, for the fact that athletes are always using their physical body and embodiment when performing. And I was absolutely shocked to be told that a lot of people have to be cash patients for this. And insurance companies, you know, are treating it like a massage as though it's, you know, elective care. So this is just a matter of education, which is that the regulators and people who cover insurance have to be educated on the fact that the cost of doing one of the therapies we're talking about is de minimis compared to uh, what happens if someone has cancer or a stroke or a heart attack or diabetes? And so it's a matter of education. It's the technologies are coming on so fast that they're outrunning the capacity of the insurance company to sort of get their head around it. But this process will occur and eventually this all will be treated by insurance. Sooner than later, I hope, Lee. <laughs> I think I think that there's uh, lobbying uh, uh, going on, and you're right. Parts of it are a little bit pricey, but parts of it aren't. And there are also all sorts of interesting new supplements that um, that you know affect the chemical balance of the brain and the body, and and uh, people should simply explore because. Um, This next generation, people in their 20s now will probably live to 120. I believe that, and I believe what it plays a lot into it, and it was a conversation I had recently, is stress. You know, there's a difference between stress and ooze stress. And obviously, stress, especially for men, can wreak havoc on a male's body. And it's now being uh, stated that there is cause in relation to 
um, cancer and, uh, you know, what males and stress, you know, at this point in your life and everything that you've accompanied in your success, how do you handle stress? What is your recommendation when we think of overall that the world is different from your generation and even my generation? What is the cause for a lot of disease and dis-ease and how can we better not manage it? How can we better take back control of our life so that we're not infected to the chaos and the chemicals of what is not only in our air, but in our own environment? So I think that um, the modern theory of uh, medicine and aging is internal inflammation. That what you're talking about with stress and what you're talking about with physical stress or emotional stress um, ha- wreaks havoc on the internal organs and and they swell and and disease can enter. So the key is uh, anti-inflammatory and uh, there's curcumin and turmeric and uh, a variety of uh, substances that will reduce that internal swelling. But it's also a matter of people being able to compartmentalize and to keep a positive attitude. The very act of smiling uh, releases uh, chemicals internally that that um, are conducive to health. Uh, conversely, um, someone that's upset is going to have uh, uh, a variety of different brain chemicals that all affect every part of the body. So the brain controls everything. So trying to figure out a philosophy practices that uh, allow you to keep perspective and proportionality so that you're realistic. It's, it's all your perception, right? So the point is, I always know I'm not a starving peasant in Darfur. I know my last name is not Steinberg in Nazi Germany in the 1930s. I know I don't have cancer or anything else. So when problems occur, it's a matter of perspective. And proportionality and keeping <clears throat> some balance is the fact that, you know, it's as corny as a gratitude list, but it's a, a fundamental understanding of the blessings that you have and optimism and resilience. It's the ability to, there will be reverses in life, but the ability to, to snap back and, and <clears throat> try again. I appreciate that. And those are simple tips and really things that need to be effective because if someone doesn't have insurance or they don't have enough money or they're concerned about being a cash payment or ongoing treatments, there are techniques and things that you can begin with that either don't cost anything and you can work your way up to some sort of remedy to have better homeostasis in your life and you're doing um the seminal step which is to give yourself more oxygen and give yourself more breath which has an effect on every internal organ it does i have noticed a huge difference and i'm not one to embellish and i don't endorse anything uh, unless I believe into it or believe in it and that I have the proof that is my responsibility to be objective, fair, and honest, to have the proof, to have the knowledge and to back it up to the best of my ability with facts. What I would like to go into, if you would like to share your thoughts on this is it was reported back, uh, last year, November, 2023, November 2nd in Forbes, And here's where the headline states, depression, anxiety, suicide, mental health issues plaguing football. Do you have any sort of thought as to where that statement lands now in reality? And is depression and anxiety something that is still plaguing football or sports in general? Well, of course it is to the extent that it's part of 
<clears throat> the fabric of, of overall health. So let's be clear, mental health is health. Um, so the fact that it is depression or bipolar, whatever it is, it's still health. So, um, and again, we have uh, all sorts of treatments inside professional sports where people see therapists, they get help. Um, they don't necessarily publicize it, but um, they use, um, <laughs> there are people who use antidepressants, there are people who, who are medically treated, and there are people who are treated through talk therapy. Do you feel when we think about mental health, is it, we've got to look at the nucleus. Everything begins emotional to mental to physical and then spiritual, cosmic, godly, so on and so forth. You have to go back in my training, having had worked in mental health for 15 years, I learned that you've got to go back to the nucleus of the emotional root of the, of where it began. That That's the key in the reality and through my education. Do you believe that the emotional root that could stem with from with a lot of athletes who are struggling with depression and anxiety, is it the pressure to perform? Is it about an key to performancely, or is it something else? Or what, where can you expand and add on to that? The fact is that uh, football, especially, is a contact sport, and the play at the players has to be in the form of denial. They accept injuries to their body and the level of physical contact and pounding that the rest of us would be put in bed forever. So they're in a band of brothers, all of whom are in the same amount of denial. And denial is a real problem in sports health because athletes want to be out there and compete, so they'll feel... Uh, limited in wanting to draw attention or talk about themselves as impaired in any way, physically, mentally, or anything else. So they're living in a subculture that believes that, you know, real men are stoic, that real men accept pain, that real men don't necessarily talk about their feelings. And so they have to escape that to find a better path. Is the support system there for most athletes or people in general? Uh, yes, it, it is because um, <clears throat> one of the things about team sports is players are together um, in a context where the coaches see them every day. The, they have teammates. In other words, they're, they're closely in touch with each other's behavior. And, um, uh, if, if someone's going through a negative emotional spell, um, it, it can, it, even with the denial, it can be pretty self-evident. Um, in other words, there are not that many groups that like a baseball team from February to the following October are together every day and sharing the same locker room and showering together. So it's hard to hide um some of that uh, emotional distress too long. Do you feel that gambling and, and sports gambling and sports betting in specifically, do you feel that that plays and weighs a lot in its determination of the overall emotional, mental, and physical health of athletes, knowing mm -hmm. that a lot of times things are very individualized or secular when we think about Super Bowl, you only have two teams. Which one's going to win? In general, throughout the year or football season, you have certain competitions and, and meets. Then we have the celebrity star power aspect of certain athletes being individualized as some sort of having a superior and authority role in society. Yet, what happens to the team uh, you know, camaraderie when a fact to where they are all there winning and working together. It's not just one specific athlete. So once again, is, is betting and, and booking and gambling and all of that, how does it affect from your personal objective viewpoint? 
Well, let's say first that there was a impregnable wall between any form of gambling and professional sports until about 10 years ago where it started to erode. So the very fact we were in Las Vegas at a Super Bowl was something that was predicted to never happen. And the fact that you have teams now owning part of FanDuel and, and fantasy sports and you've got the ability in the Washington Commander Stadium to go up and place a bet um, at the snack bar. Um, so you'll have paramutual betting in all of the places. Still, the one segregation and all of that has to be keeping athletes away from gambling and becoming indebted to a, a gambler somehow and be tempted to shave performance because right now people assume that the games are played on a, a level playing field. I don't think that athletes feel the pressure of the fact that you have fantasy sports and, and, and millions of gamblers and, and all that going on. Um, I just think it's a risk to professional sports that if you ever had a player become compromised um, and people started to think that maybe the games weren't played on an even playing field, that might be problematic. How much does it play? I, I'm, I have so many questions. It's, it's rare to get someone of your expertise and a value in this place because you're so seasoned and diversified. When we think of family, friends, a lot of players, I mean, we are all human beings. And my thought is, and I wonder, wow, even though there's a coach and there's a support system and there's doctors and, and there's advocates here for athletes from football to baseball to Olympics and everything, the number one in my conversations I have heard and what athletes in general across the board from various industries have shared is the loneliness and the lack of not being there with their friends and family, uh, not having their children there. And it's been you know, reported when we think about certain athletes who've come out and express um, their dissatisfaction in certain support systems and f falling into depression and anxiety and having to cut short their career. Um, what impact or where can we add more change and value so that there is not too far of a distance from friends and family and loved ones and children uh, so that, you know, they're not so disconnected from a reality that is their true extension, but also their livelihood to take care of not only themselves, but the people they love. I think the very structured team sports provides a level of support that shouldn't be discounted. So um, the truth is that these are bands of brothers, or in the case of female athletes, bands of sisters, and they watch each other's back. And uh, societal problems like racism and, and prejudice and all that don't come up a lot because these people know each other as people. And they bleed together and they shower together and they they are pushing towards a common goal. And um, but you'll see players bring their kids on the field, uh, uh, have their families at the games. I mean, I think they do athletes in general do a pretty fair job. The loneliness comes more in individual sports where there's not that peer support. I appreciate that. Thank you. You've got a book coming out soon. There's a lot that's happening with you. Can you give us some details? What are you at liberty to share? Um, so I wrote uh, Winning with Integrity, How to Get What You Want Without Losing Your Soul, which is a 12-step primer to the art of negotiating. And then I wrote uh, uh, The Agent, which is an a autobiography that, that traces my beginnings in 1975 and the 50 years that ha have come since this. 
And then I struggled some um, years ago with alcohol and uh, had to sort of restructure my life. And uh, so this book's called Comeback, and it's about resilience. And um, it'll talk about how I rebuilt my business in 2013 and how it developed, but more importantly, tips for living. Um, I do a series called Wednesday Wisdom uh, on all social platforms, which are just one minute distillations of of aggregated knowledge over uh, time. And they're just little tips, but it, it's, um, I mean, for example, the, the biggest skill I think is listening. It's drawing out another human being so that you understand their deepest anxieties and fears and their greatest hopes and dreams um, so that you can get into the heart and mind of another human being. And if you can draw other people out and understand the world as they see it and put yourself in their heart and mind, it's possible to navigate through life gracefully. That's beautiful. That's that's extreme. And I know that was written down. There's no way that you had wrote that down on a piece of paper and read that. That came from your right. heart. I felt it. Right. Yes. When we think about your book, um, just a couple more questions and thank you for your time. Uh, your book, is this going to be turned into a documentary series? Will this be put into another movie? Are you going to be doing a book tour? All of those things are possible. So when the book ultimately comes out, probably next fall, um, I certainly will do a book tour. We've talked to a variety of different uh, documentary filmmakers about doing something maybe that stretches over time because it's... Uh, been uh, a, a, a long and forced gumpy type of life <laughs> and um so all, all everything you just mentioned is possible in your 74 years lee have you stopped whether recently or a while ago have you sat with yourself and looked at your reflection internally and or externally and in um, doing so how do you feel about yourself and who you are i don't really think that much about um uh my, my tendency tends to be focused on other people and helping other people so i had a dad with uh, two core values one was treasure relationships especially family and the second was try to make a meaningful difference in terms of um, helping people who can't help themselves, easing pain, and, you know, being your brother or sister's keeper. So I really judge myself in terms of have I had an impact in stimulating the best values in young uh, people and help them plan towards career? And have we together used sports to try to deal with bullying and sex trafficking and domestic violence and the environment and racism and, and, you know, have we done that? But my suggestion for everyone is that episodically we do an internal inventory and take values like family, spiritual, geographical considerations, short-term economic gain, long-term economic security, um, you know, autonomy, making a difference in the world, whether it's a corner office or vacation or w what is most critically important in in life and to have that self-awareness as to what really is going to fulfill each person um, and not be uh, distracted. Um, so I think it's key to do the inventory you're talking about episodically to try to um, make sure that at 74, um, I'm current with uh, uh, a life philosophy uh, that probably is different than was at 20. Is there any advice or anything that you can share with everyone, Lee, that can help them? by doing something 
or taking action somewhere, what advice or quote or anything at all that can give someone a peace of mind right now? So my dad used to say to me, when you're looking for someone to make a change, as minor as picking up a piece of trash or as major as fighting against racism, the tendency is to wait for they or them, um, the amorphous they, uh, to do the fixing, uh, older people, political figures. And my dad used to look at me and say, if you wait for them, you could wait forever. The they who's supposed to um, uh, be in action is you, son. Okay. So if all of us would see each other as um, uh, potential actors and making a positive difference in the world, the very process of engaging in uh, outward directed activities and getting outside of yourself um, is a real stimulant for validation and mental health. What brings you the most joy when we think about you, what we don't see behind the curtain, what happens in your everyday life, life, if I may ask, like, what is it having, uh, you know, conversation? What is it? Well, uh, first of all, it's kids and treasuring my relationship with uh, my three kids and then being in a romantic relationship and, and understanding that at the end of life, all the glory, newspaper clippings, externals fade, and then you're left with uh, the quality of the relationships that you had. Were you a good son? Were you a good father? Were you um, uh, a good friend to people when it costs you something to be a friend? Um, what um, uh, and, and did you leave something of value in the world? And so um, those are the experiences helping others, designing charitable and community programs, and then the friendships and interactions with uh, people that I care deeply about. One question did come in, and this is from someone who, uh, it is Trevor. He's asking, I, I want to start having my own agency and to be a consultant. What do you recommend? Um, well, the first thing is study psychology. Because how human beings act and the way they act is sort of a key. Second of all, start um, having takes and producing content on your opinions about different issues in the world of sports. Because the first thing you want to do is brand yourself and um, distinguish yourself from everyone else. So you can be an expert simply by writing an article, blogging and opinion, um, uh, use the tools of social media to build a individual profile. I have Sarah from Wisconsin. She's asking, should I better use social media as a way to build my business or should I start using speaking platforms? And I'm assuming, can we ask her? I, yeah, I, yeah. I do both. You do both. Um, okay. And, um, so I use, um, uh, Facebook and Instagram and uh, and uh, all of the LinkedIn is especially good for networking. Um, and then I do a ton of public speaking. I gave a speech yesterday at a university, um, and uh, I think they 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 both help. But try to find something distinctive about yourself that separates you from the mass, and that. That will help you. And last question is, we did get the additional answer. Uh, she was wondering if she should start charging to do speaking engagements now or if she should, I guess, would what put an investment in, if she should pay money. I guess there are platforms that charge to be a speaker. No, uh, she can volunteer. And uh, so what you want to do is build up demand. So that may be doing a lot of uh, charitable speeches. I I don't charge anything when I talk at a college or to uh, a community group or charity just because I care about the causes. Um, and uh, But then that sets up a vibrant um, uh, marketing and uh, uh, carving out a unique identity and something to say that 
people will find a value. And so I have different speeches I give <clears throat> on the art of negotiating, on how to sell, um, on generally the economics of sports and the growth in the field. Um, what, whatever it is that's your passion, find that. I appreciate that. Lee, thank you so much for being with us today on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio and Biz Talk Radio. Any closing thoughts? What would you like to close with? Um, no, just that, that remember the commonality in our humanity, that we're all in this together. And um, that human beings are social creatures. We came out of the cave in 30 to 50 person unit so friendship and uh spending time with family at the end of the day are something that we desperately need to remain emotionally healthy i appreciate that lee thank you so much and i go ahead you're welcome and I hope to continue to be an asset for you and your agency. I would like to definitely, however, I can be of service and interview any of your um, any of your talent at all. They're more than welcome. And you, I would definitely have got to have you back on when your book's ready. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, Lee. Bye bye. Thank you to everyone who's tuned in to Live On Air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio and Biz Talk Radio. What a great experience. Lee Steinberg, sports agent, author, philanthropist, uh, chairman at Lee Steinberg Sports. For all those who want to love your life, be a vibrant light in your life. I hope this interview with Lee has helped. Uh, you know, support, volunteer, be of service, and most importantly, find that balance in your life where you don't lose yourself. You are expanding and doing things that are enriching your life. Don't water yourself down so much to where you're just stuck being of service for others. Pay attention to what's happening in your life, in your world, And know that you deserve replenishment as well so that you can continue to have your cup overflowing and to be, to be available, to be available (laughs) for you and for others. So remember that. And, um, thank you again. I'm, I'm still processing from all of this and what great sage advice. And I can't believe I didn't get an interview with him when I was at the event. It was packed and a lot, but there are times I know, you know, when to take a photo, when to ask, you know, for a photo. And I don't know, just in that moment, it didn't cross my mind because it was extremely busy, 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 busy with so many things going on. But I hope to get that photo with Lee one day. Thank you again. Join us on Power 98.5. Download the app. Tune in on Alexa. Available on Apple Music. We also stream Power 98.5 live 24-7 on live FM radio. Stream us, stream it, or my tuner, and more. All great things. Biz Talk Radio and Biz TV. BizTV.com. BizTalkRadio.com. And remember, Live on Air with Stephen Cuoco airs. Weekdays, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m., 12 p.m., and 5 p.m. Eastern. Saturdays at 10 a.m. Eastern and Sundays at 12 p.m. Eastern. Have a wonderful, wonderful New Year, everyone. Socials and let's connect. 